Hello everyone, hope you're all well and thanks so much for all the support with my videos. I'm very, very grateful to everybody who likes and shares my posts. Today I'm going to speak about what's been going on in the United States over the last few days. Leo Varadkar, Ireland's Taoiseach, departed over a week ago and he's due to come back to Ireland I think today because the doll is due to sit again on Wednesday, just for two days this week and 40 more sitting days left until the summer holidays. More vacations for, for Agcar. It was a good time for him to get out of Ireland because of the huge abject failure that his government and the political establishment got last week. The huge result for ordinary people winning the referendum against the political classes in Ireland, against the NGOs, stroke government organisations, and the media elites as well who do the bidding of the Irish political establishment. So he got out of town with many more of his government colleagues and uh, opposition colleagues as well <laughs> who travelled across to the United States, Michelle O'Neill and uh, the First Minister of Northern Ireland and Mary Lou MacDonald travelled across to the United States as well despite the demands of more and more people who, the, who were saying that he should not turn up to the White House, which I agree with because of what's gone on in Gaza. Absolutely horrific and barbaric genocide that's taken place in Gaza. Over 31,000 people have been killed, the vast majority of women and children, and Leo Varadkar still decided to go over to offer the ceremonial bowl of shamrock to genocide Joe Biden. Now, over 38 Irish politicians travelled to 80 six cities in 48 countries all at our expense to spread their joy at how well Ireland's doing not <laughs> uh, up to 900,000 people in deprivation in Ireland and uh, more and more people are struggling there's huge crises here we, we have the immigration chaos we have the housing and homeless disaster it's been ongoing for many years we also have the huge implications with the health disaster as well and many more children awaiting even special needs assessment up and down the country as well, a story that broke today. Now, they said they were view and they would leave all costs would be carefully considered, but again, we knew they all went across mainly on business class flights, all at our expense. So great junket for these guys and they're going to travel back and as I said, they're trying to distract from the issues domestically they're facing, huge crisis they're facing. I spoke about it in my video a number of days ago about the issues happening up on Mount Street. And the chaos created by that and Roderick O'Gorman, who I think was in China himself. Now this comes on the back of, as I said, the chaos here in Ireland and Varadkar swanned off and spent a week in United States. He spoke on his first day when he arrived to Boston. He said, the cries of the innocent will haunt us forever if we stay silent. But notable to say his uh, rhetoric quietened down quite considerably during the week. And it was quite interesting because on Monday he traveled to the U or JFK's Presidential Library Museum in Boston, where he was supported by Joe Kennedy uh, grandson of JFK and he went to Fenway Park and he made a nice photograph I think I'll post the photograph in the comments he was in the green monster stand I think in Fenway Park that's where the baseball team the Boston Red Sox play and uh, balls was the uh, sign he stood up um, or he took a photograph in which I think quite sums up Leo Varadkar job he's made of Ireland He's made it complete, <laughs> you know what of it, uh, to pull him oily. Now, as well on Wednesday, he traveled across to Washington DC for a few days and stayed in the luxurious mansion of the Irish ambassador's residence there in Washington DC. And he went on to meet Kamala Harris, had a lunch and dinner, I think, with her. And then he went to the speakers lunch, uh, Mike Johnson as well, where he pontificated and he spoke about Ukraine to, United, to the United States and said the Ukraine 
gets this legislation passed to... Oh, it's vital that Ukraine gets this legislation passed so uh, the money is sent to Ukraine from Congress, uh, the 60-odd billion dollar package that they're waiting for from Ukraine. And he was lecturing Mike Johnson on sending that money across to Ukraine. <laughs> I don't know if that went down too well. But of course, he changed his rhetoric during the week. He spoke about, he had a meeting then with Biden, I think, sorry, on the Friday, a 30-minute meeting and discussion where pleasantries were exchanged. And he spoke about a ceasefire, he spoke about a two-state solution, and he also spoke about the very hard work the United States have been doing towards pushing the ceasefire. He didn't mention the arms and weapons that are being sent by the US to prop up Israel. Didn't mention anything about the lobbyists, the APAC group, unsurprisingly, and all the rest of it. So again, um, while the pressure was building back home here in Ireland, Fred Carr was spawning around for a week and then he gave the bowl of shamrock yesterday on St. Patrick's Day to Joe Biden. Joe Biden himself gave his usual flowery speech to claim of his Irish heritage and spoke about the Bluets and Ballina and he spoke also about the Finnegans up in Carlingford in County Loud as well. Now it was interesting because there was a strong response from people in Carlingford. I saw a video yesterday of Carlingford, where many, where many people uh, stood up in the local area and uh, spoke out against the genocide, spoke out against the oppression, spoke out against the occupation that's taken place, and spoke about the similarities to Ireland. Now, Varadkar yesterday in the speech spoke about that as well. Uh, to <laughs> to a massive extent and I laugh in jest because it was uh, it was just farcical. Uh, Varadkar didn't do anything to challenge the weapons being sent to Israel, uh, bow down like the lapdog he is for the European Union, like he is for the United States and uh, much the same as the, uh, the Kennedy family as well and it's interesting because you might be able to see in the distance here, well just think about it, background there is actually Lansdowne Road. I refuse to call it by its commercial title, but it's up there along the banks of the Dodder. You see the stop, it. that's Ireland's football and rugby stadium. And the background there is, you might see it in the distance, is the old gas works. There's a gasometer that was there in Ring's End. Now that's owned by a vulture fund, Kennedy Wilson. Charge extortionate rents. And uh, interestingly enough, it's uh, backed up by Bobby Shriver, member of the Kennedy family, who is profiting from that as well. Involved in our company over there. We'll show you the distance there. You might see it. The light mightn't be too cooperative today, but just there in the distance, you can see the old gasometer. It has huge history here in Dublin. So uh, they're profiting massively from it. And uh, Farag Karakan is doing the bidding of the warmongers and will come back to Ireland this week and face immense pressures because of the immigration chaos, uh, the cover-up we saw on St. Patrick's Day where the tents were moved and uh, up to 30 tents are still are back there now, which is <laughs> ludicrous. It shows the whole place is completely chaotic, uh, all created by their policies. Uh, and he's been pushing this war drum in Ukraine as well. And not to mention the other fool we have, Michal Martin, who uh, travelled off to Toronto and Canada and met Justin Trudeau. Another WEF young global leader himself, Trudeau. And a few father's head moments, I'm sure, was held by uh, Michal Martin over in uh, Toronto. So hopefully he stays there, but uh, unfortunately I think he's coming back like the rest of them. <laughs> so uh, the political establishment are coming back. But of course, they're going to look for distractions over the next period of time. They're going to talk with different tins. Varadkar, when he was away, said he wasn't woke. <laughs> He's uh, very much asleep when it comes to the real concerns of ordinary people here in Ireland, with so many people suffering and struggling. Uh, so big junker for these guys traveling to the four corners of the world. Of course, Eamon Ryan, the 
Green Party leader travelled off to Brazil for an environmental conference while they tell us all what to do, what to eat, where to go and how to cycle <laughs> and how to create more traffic chaos in Dublin and all around Ireland, not to mention the other catastrophes they're creating through their policies that are anti-ordinary people. But again, this is what the political establishment are, completely out of touch and so far removed from the needs of ordinary people here in Ireland. So uh, thanks for the support of my videos. Please keep sharing my posts, my my like my Facebook page, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks to people who follow me on other channels also as well. And thanks so much for all the messages. And let me know where you're watching from. And uh, this is a response from Ireland towards the political leaders junkets off for St. Patrick's Day week festival or Leo for that week's holidays over in uh, the United States doing the bidding of the 1% and the super rich and the wealthy while a million people in Ireland are nearly being forced into deprivation hundreds of thousands on hospital waiting lists up to a million people waiting for some form of hospital treatment 14,000 people in emergency accommodation in very commas 4,000 of those are children nearly 300,000 people so-called hidden homeless not to mention the immigration chaos and these political leaders are more interested in bowing down to their bosses in Brussels and Washington DC than serving the interests of the ordinary people here in Ireland so uh, thanks for the support with videos and from Dublin take care I'll talk to you all soon bye bye Salam.